Velkommen alle sammen. Um, it is true uh, that I talk about here a lot of the things um, about pagan times and the religion, and we can come up with some very good theories and ideas, but we actually don't know for certain a whole lot about the how the Old Norse religion was practiced. All the sources we have from actual pagan times are fragmented, incomplete, or unreliable, so from the oldest sources we have, there is actually very little we can say for certain. But if we fast forward in time a little bit and look at some other sources, we can find a lot more reliable and good answers. When Christianity came in and basically made it illegal to practice our native religion, they recorded some laws forbidding some of our most important things that uh, the pagans did. Uh, the funny part is that they created these laws in order to persecute pagans and put an end to the existence of our native religion and traditions, but by doing so, they actually wrote it down, so we have it here a thousand years later, enabling us to bring it back to life now. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, all the sources and laws we have describing pagan practice so we can make use of these things today. So the first one I'll go over is actually something we find in a few sources, um, a few of the old Norse sagas, basically about the Christianization of Scandinavia right around the year 1000 uh, when they were specifically, specifically Iceland was becoming Christian. So the leaders of Iceland uh, agreed to become officially Christian and abide by Christian law on three conditions, that they would still be able to practice three of their most important pagan customs uh, that they just weren't willing to give up. The first one is that people would be allowed to practice their blots in private. Uh, the pagan sacrifices, that they would do those um, not in big open ceremonies as they did in uh, uh, pagan times, but they would be allowed to be done in the private home or farmstead or something like that. Second uh, law condition is that they would be able to eat horse meat. Uh, this was a very, very illegal thing under Christian law, but pagans thought this was so important that they needed to keep it. And even still today, actually, horse meat is illegal in many countries in the West. I think Netherlands and France, that's where I've had it before, that's allowed, but um, uh, I think you can have it in other countries. But who knows the original uh, importance of eating horse meat? It could be something special spiritual or it could just be for some good health, uh, mental and physical or something like that that the Christians didn't want the pagans to do. Number three, the condition that the pagans would still be allowed to expose newborn children, and that basically means an abortion. After a child was uh, born and before it was blessed and given a name, the child would be left out to the elements of nature to die. Just if the child was like uh, sick or or deformed or, or weak or whatever, if it couldn't have a good life uh, at that time period, whatever the reason uh, may be. Uh, again, very illegal according to Christian law, and not something we should at all do today because it's illegal pretty much everywhere, but this is something we find all pagans all over the world have a long uh, history of doing. You guys know it probably uh, most significantly from the Spartans, but it was done all over the world, not because pagans are evil savages that just enjoy seeing a baby die. Of course not, that's a horrible thing to say, but you see... The Christian or other Abrahamic beliefs believe that you are created by God, and then you get one lifetime, and when you die, that's it. You go to heaven, you only get one life. Most pagan cultures believe in reincarnation, or the eternal reborn soul of some sort. Uh, so when the Norse left their child out, it could be viewed as, you know, a spiritual, um, almost an act of compassion, actually. Like, hey, this is one of our beloved ancestors who was born in this uh, uh, body here, but it's sick or deformed or, or something is wrong with the body or crippled or something. Like, some that, that soul is not going to have a good life. So instead of making it suffer through that life, 
life. And again, back then it would have been very hard if you had some deformities like that. Instead of letting it suffer through that life, they lay it out, let that soul pass back into the spirit world, and give it another chance to be reborn into a strong, healthy body. I'm not saying I agree with all this, I'm not saying I believe in it, but people just need to realize that this is a matter of individual religious belief, right? In the Christian beliefs, it's abortion and it's baby killing, but just realize that there are many other religions in the world other than the uh, monotheistic ones who have a different belief of the soul and afterlife. So that's an entirely different question uh, and an aspect of ethics around those things. That's what a lot of people fail to understand when arguing this issue today. So I don't have the answer, I don't have any beliefs on that, but I do respect uh, all people's sides and, and their beliefs uh, and whatever their religion says is uh, the right thing to do. Next source, we have three law codes from Norway and Iceland um, in the 1300s, and that lists the punishment of outlawry for things like murder, witchcraft, soothsaying journeys, uh, like trips to gain wisdom um, of the future, like I'll speak about in just a minute, and also it prohibits sitting out at night to awaken trolls and promote heathendom. You guys know what that is, that's Utiseta, when you uh, sit out at night uh, for some spiritual purposes. I've done lots of videos on that you can check out. Another law is called the Eldre Vestgötterlogen from Sweden, and here we have one that speaks about uh, the words that can be considered slander if you were basically accusing someone of witchcraft or being pagan. If you said these things about a woman and they were not true, then you could actually be punished for slander for calling her a pagan. So it basically speaks about the pagan act of cursing another woman and engaging in witchcraft or other pagan practice in here. And specifically in this law code, it mentions sitting on a gate with your hair loose. So this was actually a ritual where they would sit on a gate either at the sunset or sunrise or perhaps the equinox and then they would sit on a gate and get themselves into a trance-like state. And the idea here is that here in our realm we sit on the gate in order for our spirit or hygge to travel into uh, the border or gate between other realms and dimensions, not traveling into other realms, but just sitting on the border to get a glimpse into others. It's a perfect example of sympathetic magic, as I have spoken about in other videos, so that's a great place for us today to try some meditation if you have a gate that is, you know, comfortable to sit on. Uh, another one, the Grogos laws of Norway, they call upon people to trust in God and his saints and to not worship heathen spirits, and if someone practices or pays someone to practice witchcraft, sorcery, or magic, then they would receive the punishment of lesser outlawry. Uh, also, they would uh, receive the punishment of lesser outlawry if they endowed stones with power or other superstitions like this, uh, that would be punishable. And on the opposite of that, you would be sentenced to full outlawry if you used any of these types of magic to cause harm to animals or humans. So it's definitely varying degrees of seriousness for those crimes. And next one is something called the Gulating uh, Laws. Uh, now these are actually the oldest ones we have, but they were amended in the late 13th century. Um, first of all, it's uh, prohibiting uh, practicing soothsaying or fortune telling, among other forms of witchcraft in there. But also, when King Magnus made these amendments to the laws in the 13th century, it obliges people to believe in the faith that we have pledged to God, as it says, and it calls upon the king and bishop uh, that they must take great care to ensure that people don't engage in heresy and heathen beliefs. Uh, these beliefs and practices include things such as galded, it lists, so like charms, uh, incantations, uh, any types of witchcraft, um, what they call trill. Uh, riding trolls. Um, we think that's some sort of meditation or spiritual work or astral travel, something like that. It prohibits prophecy and it prohibits believing in spirits uh, living in the land, the mounds, or the waterfalls. Uh, and also in here it prohibits utiseta uh, again, uh, and that was used to tell the future, become knowledgeable or wise, or search for treasure or awaken ghosts or draugr or haugbu, the uh, spirits living in the mound. So long list of things there that we can all try out today. 
Another one is called King Sverdjers Kristenret from a bit later on in time. And in here it copied most of the things that I just mentioned in the Gulating uh, laws, but it also prohibits in here raising a pole for charm purposes. Uh, we could include the Nidstung in there, or maybe even the Maypole, but in this law code it's specifically called a uh, Skuldstung, uh, the Skuld Pole, basically, and it also prohibits in this law code uh, idols or statues of heathen uh, spirits and sacrificing to the gods and spirits and cairns and mounds. So that's awesome, lots of cool things there. We can keep statues of the gods and we can um, uh, place our offerings at the cairns and mounds, which you guys have seen me do in my videos. Um, that's my favorite place to do it, actually. Another one is called the uh, Frostatingslov. Um, if a man sacrifices to heathen gods or practices soothsaying or sorcery, or if a man gives credence to such a one or harbors him for such purposes, he shall be outlawed like a banesman and the bishops shall have his property to the last penny. So here you can see it was equally punishable whether you were a practicing pagan or sorcerer or if you just hired one or even just invited one over to your house so you would be punished just as bad. Um, another one called Beurgertingslov. Um, uh, this one actually has a great list of things that were considered heathen and illegal. Sitting out at night, utiseta, uh, you know that already. It also prohibits something called fin food, which was making trips. It was kind of like vacations that were taken to uh, Finland or uh, Finnmark in the north of Norway to consult with the Sami there to have them tell about your future. Uh, there's a long history of the Norse traveling to see uh, a Sami spiritual leader to get some uh, magic or divination or other spiritual help from them. Another illegal practice here is mentioned um, a woman biting off a finger or toe of her child in order to secure longevity. I have no idea where that comes from, um, but I guess some people uh, believed in that and did it enough that they had to make a law forbidding it. That, you know, biting off a, a, one of your child's uh, fingers or toes would give you a longer life or more vitality. Who knows? Don't do it. <laughs> that is definitely not okay or illegal. Um, another one in here, it makes it illegal to raise the child as a heathen or pagan. The final part of this law goes over a list of pagan pagan or witchy type items that you were prohibited to have, uh, keeping it in your bed or pillow. Those things include human hair, frog's feet, nails, or other things recognized as sorcery that are not listed in these laws. So all very interesting. These are some really good um, origins and reasons for all these things that I'll have to go into in another video, but those are just some of the items that were associated with uh, paganism. Another one is a law code called the Eidsviatingslov um, from Upland area of Norway, which was said to remain pagan for some of the longest, and these laws come from the 12th century, and here it prohibits it's a few items such as magic wands, heathen altars, puppets, which were like the Norse voodoo dolls made out of clay usually or sometimes dough, and anything else that could be considered part of pagan practices as it writes in that law. Another one called the Dalalogen from Sweden. It has another good list of items here that are considered pagan and illegal. Hair, nail clippings, also horns, which interestingly are all composed of the same material as most of you know. And another one from uh, Sweden basically accounts uh, for these same types of things, that if an individual was caught with horn or hair within the yard and gate, then they could be punished. Again, we see here the use of horn and hair um, and sitting on the gate, as I mentioned earlier. Um, final one that I'll give you for this video, a very late one actually, around the year 1500 in Sweden. Uh, it prohibits incantations, soothsaying, interpretation, of dreams and writing with characters and words not found in sacred texts which some superstitious people believe to be potent against fire, water, sword, disease, and all other uh, threats like that. Um, and also it writes that um, writing on lead um, as, as defense for toothache or fever or other diseases of men and beasts, that was all uh, illegal too. And guys, these are all things we have 
records of uh, people uh, in pagan times, even Odin or the Valkyrie Brunhilde and some of our um, Eddic poems speaking about. So this can be like rune magic or, or, or staves or things like that. And, you know, a lot of people look at these Icelandic staves and symbols uh, from the 1500s and onwards um, that you guys all ask me about all, a lot of the time. A lot of people look at those and say that they're Christian and they can't really be dated back to pagan times. I wouldn't be so sure about that, honestly. They could very well be pagan originals uh, for much longer before they were originally recorded. One last thing I'll give you, uh, just to prove my points here. Uh, legal case in the year 1492 in Stockholm, there were two men that were caught stealing from churches and they declared that they had been serving Odin for seven years, which they were punished for. Another court case from around that same time, one man confessed to um, uh, renouncing God for Odin and he traveled counterclockwise nine times on nine Thursdays, Thor's days in, in a row for it to gain wealth. And these people were all tortured and killed for doing these pagan practices. So there you have it. It just you know gives you a ton of records of actual uh, pagan practices that we can all do today. Fortunately for us, we don't have to worry about the repercussions uh, that they had to worry about back then. And as you can see from all the examples that I just brought up, yeah, uh, as we're told, Scandinavia became officially Christian and outlawed paganism around the year 1000. But as you see, it did not die out. Even 500 years later, it was still living. It has never completely died out, okay? What I went over here was just the list of the things that we have clear written records uh, of pagan things that were still being practiced long after uh, paganism became illegal. But we have many, many more records of things that speak about uh, witchcraft, which I didn't go uh, over in this video, but we have even more uh, traditions recorded that have been done over the past thousand years that we may think are Christian, but in reality, most of it is pagan original. Christmas, Halloween, Midsummer, those are traditions are just to name a few, but that's a long video for another day. This video was just to give you guys a few ideas of things to try out. We are fortunate enough that today we don't have to worry about getting imprisoned or killed, uh, like I said, if we practice our native religion, so we can definitely try to do some of these things uh, today. As long as you're not hurting anyone else or bothering anyone else or breaking any laws, then have at it. Hope you enjoyed this video and gave you some ideas at least. Uh, we see us next time.